The floodlights of the Olympic Stadium rise above the trees. Carol Lang, vegan Olympian, has come here where East London's Greenway Path crosses into the Olympic Park and the canal around it to talk to the vegan option. I'm Ian McDonald. We're splitting the August show into parts to get this interview to you as soon as possible during the Games. Canadian Carol Lang is the youngest woman ever to score a goal in international football. In a game that often ends without any points scored at all, that's a very big deal. Cara played and scored for her country at Beijing four years ago, but in 2011 injuries forced her retirement. She's in London reporting on the Olympics for CTV in Canada. Welcome to the Vegan Option, Caroline. How are you enjoying the game so far? Thank you for having me, first of all. Um, it's been a wonderful experience. First of all, because London has done such a wonderful job in hosting the games, um, everything has gone exactly as it should and better. And also for me personally to experience the Olympics on the other side as, as part of the media has been really cool for me. So you started playing internationally really young. I know that first girl was at age 15. How did that overlap with when and, and why you went vegan in time? When I was 15 was the first time I started playing with the national team, um, but it was also around that same time that I moved across the country to play soccer. Um, I got selected to play for a, a football club called the Vancouver Whitecaps. They have a men's program and a women's program, and they recruited me to come play with them and train all year round, and it was while I was living out in Vancouver uh, that I was exposed to vegetarianism for the first time. Um, and then I started to do a little bit of research and realized that if I was going to be vegetarian, I, I felt like I, I should go all the way and be vegan. And um, from there, I just made the decision one day. And I think the last non-vegetarian meal that I had was I had a piece of pizza. I had two slices. One was pepperoni. One was just cheese. I ate the one with pepperoni and said, that's the last bit of meat I'll ever have. Finished the one with cheese and then decided at that point that I would try to be vegetarian for a few months and then depending on how that went the plan was to switch to vegan go full vegan and um, it was actually only about a month into it that I cut everything out. So how did your coaches and teammates react to that? My teammates were supportive and they certainly weren't very surprised because they as they would always said that I um, have always kind of dance to the the beat of my own drum they said and but my coaches were I think that they were a little bit worried that it was going to affect my performance because especially at that time people were really unaware of you know how many vegan alternatives are out there and and how you really can be vegan and and maintain athletic performance and and also just overall health so there were a lot of questions and a lot of doubts at first and that is kind of actually I think what spurred me on to do more research about it and to really um, become educated about how to do it properly and um, I think that that's obviously has benefited me in the long run. So what kind of things did they say? Uh, it was just always you know the typical question of how are you ever going to get your protein um, you're going to lose a bunch of weight you're going to lose your muscle, just things like that, just because of uh, lack of education, really, and ignorance, I think. Also, traveling was an issue. They were concerned that when we were in foreign countries that the vegan alternatives weren't, weren't going to be available. And, and they weren't, but it also just means a little bit of extra planning, and that was something I learned along the way. How are the options at Beijing? Beijing wasn't so bad. Um, any Asian country has tofu readily available for the most part and a lot of vegetables and I would pack my own supplies for sure but especially once we got to the village it wasn't very difficult at all because you're living in the athletes village and the dining hall has options for um, every nation. Um, we had a traditional tea meal in China one time and it was a really nice celebration and they the Chinese Football Federation had done an amazing job of putting together the event, but um, the traditional food, a few of the dishes involved entire heads of fishes and things like that. And they will still bring it to your table even when, you know, you, you tell them you don't want it and you try to politely decline. So there's just definitely a few jokes around situations like that. But um, for the most part, 
you know, especially having somebody else on the team like Amy, we helped each other out and, and we saved each other. And as soon as we would get to any country, we would look for the health food store and, and go get supplies as well as bring as much as we could. We sometimes would have extra suitcases full of food. So when you joined the national squad, you weren't the only vegan on the team. I mean, Walsh was there too. Mm-hmm. So is it just a complete coincidence that there were two vegans in the Canadian national team in 2008? No, no, not at all. I mean, Amy was um, a mentor for me, absolutely. And it's actually, it's kind of funny because it wasn't until she had left the team, um, she kind of semi-retired at one point, and she had been gone for about a year, and, and that was when I really started to um, research veganism and, and really became very interested in it. I remember when I was really, well, relatively relatively young, when I was 15 and um, I'd first met her, I was very interested um, just because I'm a curious person in general. And so I would ask her a lot of questions and she would always start by going, are you sure you want to know? <laughs> are you sure you want to know? And then, and she would tell me, you know, some slaughterhouse stories and things like that and and I would always want to know more but um it wasn't until yeah she left for a little bit and then she came back and it was kind of funny because I was like hey Amy guess what I'm vegan (laughs) could you let people know uh Amy's role in the national squad okay yeah Amy was I don't know exactly how many years older than me, me she is about seven or eight years older she'd been around for quite a while she was vegan she had been vegan for a number of years when I had met her Um, And she was a veteran on the team and she was sort of in and out of the program at one point. And like I said, it wasn't really until she left for a period of time that that I got really interested in veganism. So Diana wrote in the blog that you're trying to find the best cupcakes. Mm -hmm. Has London helped with that? Yes, Miss Cupcake has been amazing. And going to the vegan exchange, they've got, or vegan crossing, VX, right? Yes. Yeah, Um, that place is really cool. But... Yeah, he, the, the the owner was complaining in our last show about um, about potentially losing business through the Olympics. So I'm glad that we have helped to send somebody here that way. Oh, it it was amazing. I'm actually planning to go back um, at some point this weekend before I leave. Who has the best cupcakes of the ones you tried in the world history ever? Um, I'm going to have to say that the ones that I make at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pretty big fan of my own baking, that, that if is I say cheating. so myself. <laughs> um, there's actually quite a few places in in Toronto and I I also used to live in Los Angeles and Los Angeles is just a phenomenal place um, to find vegan options (laughs) so there's definitely a few restaurants there that are my favorite that have some fantastic desserts. Has the response to your diets amongst the fans as well as the other athletes and the and the, the the athletic community changed over time? I think as veganism becomes more mainstream, yeah, a lot more people um, ask me about it. Before, a few years ago, you know, people would hear and they just really wouldn't be curious at all. It's not a huge topic that I bring up. It's It's been so long now that it's just kind of the way it is for me. You know, there, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that still don't even know that I'm vegan. Um, and I love talking about it, but um, it's certainly not the first topic of conversation especially in the sports world so it's the 1992 olympics the long jump in the 1992 olympics okay carl lewis is the the man to beat for america and he's publicly known to be on a vegan diet edric Florial is representing canada who do you root for the canadian (laughs) i mean i was canadian before i was vegan (laughs) so that's kind of that's that's a no-brainer i've i've struggled once in a while with the idea that you know saying i am a vegan as opposed to saying i choose to live a vegan lifestyle because i i don't necessarily love the idea of separating myself in that way because it's to me claiming that i'm absolutely 100 percent right and what i'm doing is right as opposed to what you're doing you know if somebody chooses to eat meat that what they're doing is absolutely wrong I I don't love that I don't love that separation so of course I still do identify myself as a vegan but um, for me I'm all about inclusion and I I don't think that 
we win anybody over by forcing our beliefs on them. And I would rather just be a, a really good example of what, a, uh, what it means to be vegan and hopefully win people over with my baking. <laughs> Carol Lang, thank you very much. Thank you. Rob Masters wrote the theme and the show is copyright us.